Hello, uh, today we're gonna to be diving a little bit deeper into linear algebra. Um, so at the end of last uh, exercise, uh, or last lecture, there was this exercise um, where you had a number of fruit baskets with apples and bananas, <clears throat> and you knew the prices that they were sold for. And uh, basically each basket worked out to be an equation and you had to solve for <clears throat> um, how, how much an apple is worth, how much a banana is worth, so on and so forth. Um, I set that up very carefully so that you could solve that problem. Um, to understand messier problems and solve them, uh, we have to learn a little bit more um, about matrices and, and, and multiplying them. And so that's going to be a little bit of review here and also building. Um, here I'm doing a, a dot product between um, a matrix and a vector, uh, which has been our main focus. And I'm going to do it, solve that problem three ways. First, I'm going to use NumPy to solve it. And then I'm actually going to write my own uh, dot function um, that will solve it. Actually, I'm going to write two versions of the dot function that are going to help you um, see two different ways of conceptualizing um, the dot product. And we're going to need to do that so we can build back to solve that more complicated problem of um, kind of how we can solve for independent variables uh, uh, more generally. Okay, so here I'm going to first to solve this uh, import numpy as np. And uh, then the next thing I need to do is I have to uh, capture these values in, um, in, in some arrays. So I'm going to say np.array. And what values do I have? Uh, I guess I have 4, 5, 6, 7, and uh, 8, 9. Okay, so I'm going to put that in, in a matrix A. Let me take a peek at that. Uh, right, so I'm just trying to doing these pieces up here. Right, so I've done that part. Uh, now let me do this other piece. I need to have this vector containing two, three. Right, so I'm gonna uh, say x equals np dot array. And of course, there's two ways I could do this. One is that I could, um, well, if I just do this, that's not right by itself because it's not really clear whether that uh, matrix or that vector x is horizontal or vertical, right? So I could do something like this to tell it that this is a vertical uh, matrix, or I'm sorry, I keep saying matrix, I mean vector. I could do that to show that it's a, um, a vertical vector. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say reshape. And I'm going to say that, uh, well, I have to say how many rows and how many columns. And the key thing is that I want one column. Is this going to be vertical? And I mean, use as many rows as you need. Okay, so I have those two pieces. And, uh, and now I may compute the dot product uh, between them, right? I say np dot dot, and I can pass in two values. I can say a and x, and I can get the dot product, which is this vector, uh, 22, uh, 33, 43, and, um, and so this answer, right, the number of rows here, I have three values here, has to match the number of rows in my original matrix. Right, so that's one of the things that has to match. Other thing that has to match for this to work is that um, the number of columns in my matrix has to match the number of uh, values in my vector. Okay, so I did that. Let me just show you one more thing, another way of doing the same thing. Rather than always saying numpy dot and then two arguments, um, I can have a method version of this, right? So this is a function, right? It's not really associated with an object. It's just some function inside of numpy. But there's also a method like this that I can use on array. So I can say a dot x does exactly the same, same thing, right? So since it's a method, a is the self variable, and this is the second, um, second parameter. Okay, so that's what we can do if we want to just um, kind of have NumPy compute it for us. Uh, but we should understand what's going on. And I've talked a little bit about one uh, definition for the dot product before. And I'm going to review that by writing a function that does this dot uh, for us. Right? And there's actually two different ways. I'm going to be introducing a new way um, called the column picture. Uh, but first, the row picture. And I want to do that same operation. And it turns out when I'm multiplying um, when I'm multiplying a matrix by a vector, I can really go row by row, right? I can take this 
and dot product with it with this, which gives me this piece right here, right, which cranks out to 23, right? So I get, I get four times two plus five times three equals 23, right? And I can do that row by row. The next piece I can do this row times this piece. This is the row by row piece, um, approach. And so that's very important. I'm sorry, let me just uh, try to split this up here quick. I had meant to do this before the video started. Um, oops, we had a new cell here. Uh, you know, I, I have some stuff here that's marked down. So I'm gonna go to cell, uh, cell type markdown. Then I can actually put that back how it was. Okay, great, I just wanna try to interleave the code here. So how can I do the dot product using this calculation? So I'm gonna actually write my own uh, dot uh, function like this. And I'm gonna have a matrix M and a vector V. Okay, I may have some stuff here. Right, and I'm actually gonna since I'm doing two versions of this, I'm gonna have uh, the row dot, and uh, and later I'm gonna have something down here, which I may call column dot. Right, and 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 basically my hope is that numpy dot dot, row dot, and column dot all do the same thing. Right, that's my goal. Right? I just want to show you different ways to conceptualize a calculation and often writing the code for a calculation uh, can cement it in your mind. Right, So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so like I said, for the this kind of dot product, right, I can draw row by row. So maybe what I ought to do is I ought to loop over all the rows. So I can uh, maybe do a for i in range loop. Um, maybe I'll say for row uh, index in range of length of my matrix M. Okay, um, so that's good. And um, what does the length of a matrix do? Uh, that returns the zeroth dimension. So, so let me just uh, remind you of this. Let me put a pass here. All right, so if I say length of A, right, that's three, that's, um, I look at a dot shape, right? That's just how many rows I have, right? So I'm definitely looping over all of the row indexes here, and um, and so let me let me do this. I'm gonna uh, do some multiplication, right? So I have to I have to compute this value right here, right? So I'm just gonna put that in a variable y, and um, maybe I'll start it off at zero, and and I have to loop. I have to loop over to multiply four times two, and then add five. Uh, plus three, right? So now I also have to loop over the over the columns, right? So I'm going to say for column index in range, and um, and there's different ways I could do it. Now I think maybe the easiest thing, well, what I could do is I could say this, uh, but of course that has to be the same as v dot shape of zero, right? And v dot shape of zero is just the length of v, right? So length of v is just trying to tell me how many numbers there are since that uh, vector is is vertically oriented, right? So and I'm just trying to actually call this i, right? It's a little confusing to call it um, column because, well, I'm looping over these columns, right? But I'm going to use that same value to loop over these, right? So it's kind of strange to uh, have the variable called column if I'm looping over them like that. Okay, so y has to plus equal something, right? Because we're trying to add up a bunch of these uh, multiplied pairs, right? So what will it plus equal? Well, it'll be m and then row index i, right? So here I'm just looping across the row of the matrix and I'm gonna multiply that by what? I'm gonna multiply that by that ith value there, right? So I get four, times two, another iteration of the loop, I get five times three. And let, for now, let me just print off what the, these y values are. I'm gonna run that, and um, well, of course it does nothing unless I call it. I'm gonna pass my A matrix to M. Remember that, um, I'm not really showing the code here, but this was my A matrix. And I'm gonna pass X to V. And remember that this vector uh, uh, was my x factor. 
I run that. And we see that we're um, getting these same numbers as expected, 23, uh, 33, and 43. And, and so like the last piece I want to do is rather than printing each of those, <clears throat> I want to put them in some sort of um, list, right? So instead of printing them, I'm going to append them. Then when I'm all done, I'm going to return those results. And I'm going to format it as an, uh, as an array, right? So I'm going to run that. And cool, I'm getting the same thing that I got out of the real one, right? Out of NumPy's version, right? So I, I can see that it seems like I implemented this the same as this, right? So this is the way that people often learn how to do dot product initially, right? You loop over um, and one row at a time, you use to compute this result, right? So loop over this, four, five, compute the 23. Okay, let's talk about another way to conceptualize um, the dot product. Well, we've seen before that we can do the dot product by multiplying uh, one vector by another, as here, right? So I'm multiplying c0, c1, c2 by x, y, z. And um, when I do that, uh, one way I might phrase this dot product is I might say I'm taking a linear combination of the c values. Um, a linear combination means that I have a bunch of values, um, I multiply them all by something, and then I add them together. Um, so maybe the simplest linear combination would just be C0 plus C1 plus C2, right? If I'm just adding them all together, uh, I guess I could say I'm multiplying them all by one and then adding them together. Here I'm multiplying C0 by X, uh, C1 by Y, and C2 by Z, right? So that's what it's doing, right? I'm taking a linear combination, um, uh, of these by doing the stop product. I'm, you know, X tells me how many C zeros I want, Y tells me how many C ones I want, Z tell me, tells me how many uh, C, C twos I want, right? So that's why I get this equation. Now the cool thing about this is that it works even if those C zero, one, and two um, are not just simple scalars or simple numbers by themselves. It works even if C zero, C one, and C two um, happen to be columns. So I can actually look at this down here, right? If I look at this matrix here, I, I can look at that as, well, I have a C0 and a C1 in there. C0 is the 4, 6, 8 column, and C1 is a 5, 7, 9 column. And so what that means is that I can take this column, I can take this column, oh, let me grab that, I can take this column here, and I can multiply it by zero, or I'm this this value here, right? So I get I get two of the first column, right? Notice that now I'm just doing it element wise. So what will that be? That will be you know eight, twelve, sixteen, right? And then then I take the the next one, right? I take the next column, and then the next coefficient from this factor, right? So I get what do I do? I get oh, excuse me, I get three. Of the second column, right? That's what that means. When I multiply, um, I multiply a matrix by a vector. I'm taking a linear combination of the columns, right? I multiply each of the columns by something, and then add them, add up those columns. Okay, so different calculation than this up here, but you can already see that it gives me the same result. These are uh, mathematically um, equivalent. I'm not going to try to convince you of that. I'm just going to let you take that. Um, as a fact, right? But I'm going to, at least in this example, implement it um, from this other perspective. Because this, this column picture, conceptualizing in this way, is really going to help us see um, some problems when we want to kind of discover what the coefficients are for some a model. Okay, so what do I want to do here? Well, now, um, ultimately, I, I need to return the column at the end, and I'm kind of adding up these columns one at a time. All right, so maybe what I'm going to do is I'll have a variable called column uh column sum and um you know i may start off with some zeros and um well what shape do i want for that um it's maybe two-dimensional right this is two-dimensional over here um I, I guess well how many rows do i have i don't quite know let me think about that i have one column um well i guess the number of values here that I'm having on the right 
better match the number of rows I have in my original matrix. So I guess really for this, I can just say, well, what is the length of M? And when I'm all done, I'm gonna return that column sum. And there's some work to be done here. But I just wanna take a peek quick when I do this dot product using the column uh, kind of view of the world. What do I get? Um, I, I get these three values on top of each other, right? And so what I wanna do now with this uh, zero, 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 is that I want to add two of this column and I want to add three of this other column. Okay, that's my goal, right? So I have to loop over the columns this time, right? So how can I do that? So I can say for column index and range of uh, something, um, this isn't right. That would loop over the rows, so that's no good. Um, this is another way to loop over the rows. This is how I loop over the columns, right? So I'm going to loop over all the columns in my matrix, okay? And so, so let me do this. I'm just going to pull out these columns. And, um, and so how can I do that? I, I have to do some slicing. So I have to figure out what rows and what columns here, right? So I'm slicing it. Uh, you know, I think I want all of the rows. And um, which columns do I want? I think I just want um, whatever index I'm on. So let me, let me take a peek at this, see how we're doing. And, um, and, and, and you know what I'm seeing is that the dimensions of these are weird, right? It pulled out four, six, eight as my first column, uh, but it's changing the dimension of that, right? And that's because here I'm just kind of pulling out one column. Um, what I'd really like to do to keep it vertically oriented still is do a slice of size one, right? So I still get that vertical uh, vertical shape. I'm just trying to do that. So I'm just taking a slice of that one thing, but that, that still keeps it as a two-dimensional deal, right? So I can see my four, six, eight is still uh, vertically oriented. Right? So I'm going to do that. And you know, what? I'm just trying to print an extra um, new line after it so I can see that. Okay, my first column and then my second column. Okay. Okay, I'm getting close. You know what I'd like to do though, is I'd like to uh, multiply those columns by my values and my vectors, right? I would like to multiply them by this two or my three. So how am I gonna do that? I have to multiply this by something here. Um, how am I gonna do that? Well, I guess as I go column by column, I'm going down in this vector, right? So as I go over, different column index, I go further down. So I can do something like this. I can say V of column index. Kind of a little strange, right? That um, a bigger column takes me down, but that's because I named it column index because I'm going across here. I do that and um, that's the row. And, and I'm just trying to say zero to pull out a single scalar here, like two or three. So I'm gonna do that and watch what happens down here, right? This should get multiplied by two and this should get multiplied by three, and um, and so it does, right? So four, six, eight becomes two, 12, 16. So I want two of the first column. And then, then I have this three here, right? So I wanted three of the second column, right? So five, seven, nine becomes 15, uh, 21, 27, right? So I have all these columns and I can just add them up and in, into this one here that I'm kind of returning at the end, right? I can just add those there. I'm gonna say column sum plus equals that column, right? This this variable here is becoming a linear combination of those columns based on the values or the weights and V, right? V tells me how much I should weight each column in M, right? So I run that and very cool. I get those same values, 23, 33, and 43. I'm just trying to clean that up a little bit the exact same as I had in the other, other versions, right? So that column picture is really important. We're gonna be talking more about that. I'm trying to keep this in your mind, right? Um, because we're gonna be talking about things like column space too, which I'm guessing uh, many of you have not heard of before.